This is my definition of a flying monkey. A flying monkey is anyone who is duped by or enables a narcissist. Flying monkey, you know this. They're referred to as winged monkeys in the Wizard of Oz, but it's easier to say flying monkeys. So that's what everybody calls them in pop psychology. But you got a narcissist, and the narcissist wants to influence other people because... He or she has this ego that needs to be fed constantly, uh, needs to be inflated, needs to be boosted. And the most effective way to do that, or one of the most effective ways to do that, is to recruit an army of helpers. And what do you call those army, that army of helpers? Well, collectively, you call them flying monkeys. So uh, the question is, why would anyone do that? Well, I was a flying monkey, and the reason I did it primarily was because I didn't know any better. I didn't know I was a flying monkey. I was being used, I was enabling this person, and I didn't know it because I believed the lie. I was totally unaware. I believe this was a good person who was just kind of down on his luck, having some hard times. Truth of the matter is, he was just supremely arrogant over the top and uh, so arrogant, as I've said in other videos. This guy wouldn't even hold a job because he didn't want to answer so arrogant, didn't want to answer to a boss. He didn't want the boss putting him under his thumb is the way that he phrased it. So we have this thing where uh, we believe a lie, and then sometimes we take on the narcissist because believing the lie, we think, okay, this is the project. Because I am an empath, because you are an empath, we like to help people. And the narcissist will present as being needy, as a person who needs help. They don't need help, but what they need is to take advantage of you. So it's kind of like the guy who is standing at the corner with a sign that says uh, uh, financially dire or whatever, anything will help, and then when he's done for the day, he gets in his car and goes to a nice house. That is a, that's a good analogy of what a narcissist does. They pretend they have these needs so people will give to them just so they can take advantage of those people. They really don't need it. Another reason that we tend to align ourselves with narcissists is because uh, this wasn't my case, but in many cases, uh, a flying monkey will perceive this is a person of power. This is the alpha male, or maybe the female. This is a person that uh, it is beneficial to me to be aligned with him or her, even though, uh, well, an overt narcissist, yeah, that could be true. But uh, a covert narcissist, not so much. Very seldom are they powerful people. Uh, sometimes they are. But when they are, a flying monkey says, all right, I want to be a part of that. I want to get into that mix. And so they become duped by the narcissist. Another reason is they are easily duped. Now, that was part of my problem. That's part of most of our problems because uh, we're just naive. We're just gullible. And another reason is sometimes People just feel inferior, we feel kind of shallow, and we need a friend, we need a buddy. Look, if you want someone to be friendly to you, go to a used car lot. Friendliest person in the world will come out and have a conversation with you. But uh, a narcissist, you know, we don't know they're narcissists. We just believe the love bombing, and we feel inferior, so we just buy right into that. There, I got a friend, finally. I belong to something. Somebody expects me to be a normal person. And they respect me as a normal person. No, they don't. We just don't know that they don't. Well, what are the roles that flying monkeys play? Well, the primary role is we are expected to believe the narcissist. We are supposed to believe his narrative, her narrative. We are expected to believe their life story. We're expected to believe all of their lies, how they explain themselves, why it is that they are the way that they are, which they lie about. But they're very good at lying. Our role is to be enablers. Our role is to be supporters. Sometimes, as we said earlier, enabling may be nothing more than just being this person's friend. Other people see us befriending the narcissist, so they say, well, the narcissist may, must be an okay guy because Ken befriended him. That was my way of being an enabler, among others. We also are sometimes used as spies. I don't know that I was ever used as a spy, but the narcissist had spies come visit me. I remember one time I was uh, working out in a gym. Okay, I, I pretended I was working out. You know, I was doing the best I can. Come on. But I was in the gym working out, and this guy, a mutual friend, came in, and he started asking me about the narcissist. Why did he come in? You know, it's like, I don't know, one o'clock in the morning, one of those, you know, 24-7 gyms. Why did he come in and talk to me? 
Well, I don't know for certain, but he brought up the narcissist, and that's what he wanted to talk about. I think what he was doing is he was sent by the narcissist to pick my brain to find out what I thought of the narcissist. More importantly, to find out what I was saying about the narcissist. Now, fortunately, even though I didn't recognize this guy at the time as being a flying monkey, I've never been one to gossip a lot. So I just didn't say a whole lot because, quite frankly, I wanted this guy out of my life. I really didn't want to talk about it. Another time, there was a guy who, uh, hey, meet me at uh, Burger King. Um, let's have a conversation. Same thing. The guy just wanted to talk about the narcissist, and my presumption is he was a flying monkey. He wanted to know what I was thinking, what I was saying about the narcissist. So narcissist or uh, flying monkeys, rather, are used as spies. That's one of our roles. We're also expected to be slanderers. So we believe that the narcissist lies, and therefore we believe that his, um, his gossip, his slander, is justified, and uh, somehow we're on, a, uh, we're on a mission from God to debunk and hurt and slander this uh, person who has been so mean to the narcissist. Well, it turns out this person who was so mean to the narcissist was actually the victim. So we are helping the narcissist victimize this poor guy. That is, we're expected to do that. Now, I think I can say with absolute certainty that I was never caught up in that, but I certainly was a victim of it. We find empowerment. Some people find empowerment in hanging out with narcissists. This is... When somebody is a grandiose narcissist, I like to call them overt narcissist. So you have this grandiose narcissist and everyone knows that he's a big shot. He bullies and pushes his way around. And if you want to get along in life, you got to be in his or her good favor. And so we do that. We become his or her flying monkeys. And a lot of times these people command uh, uh, dozens, maybe, I don't know, depends on the individual, maybe hundreds of flying monkeys. But it never ends well. It never ends well. Uh, also, narcissist will eventually, and this is important, narcissist will eventually, I say it won't end well, turn on the flying monkeys. Why do they do that? I mean, these people have served the narcissist well. Narcissist doesn't care about them. That's why he's a narcissist. That's why we call them narcissists. What does the narcissist care about? He cares about himself, right? So he cares about inflating his or her ego, and that's pretty much it. So if using you as a flying monkey inflates their ego, that's what they're going to do. But if they want to victimize you in some other way, that's what they'll do. Whatever boosts their ego, whatever gives them supply, which we define as inflating their ego. All right, so how do you get free from this? So if you are a flying monkey or you know somebody who is, how are we going to free these people? How are you going to free yourself? What I have learned in my nearly 70 years of experience works every single time with a few exceptions, but almost every single time, is once a flying monkey realizes the truth, he's out of there. I mean, we are gone. Once I realized that I was being scammed by the a narcissist, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of hard-headed. It took me a long time to catch on. I knew something was amiss, but I still had that, well, I'm going to be this guy's friend. I'm going to be loyal no matter what. I mean, how stupid is that? That's pretty stupid. I hate to call myself stupid, but I don't know what else to call myself. That's I was just being dumb. So once we realize the truth, and it, it may take a lot to get us to recognize that, then we're out of there. If, if we realize that we are being used as flying monkeys, that we're being used as enablers, that is, well, nobody likes to be used, that is a catalyst to get us away from the narcissist as far away as we possibly can. If you are honest and you are a person of character, you don't want to be aligned with a rascal. You don't want to be aligned with a, uh, with a grifter. You don't want to be aligned with somebody who is a fraud. You want to be aligned with honest people because hanging out with these people will not only uh, soil your reputation, but it will also influence your thinking. Sometimes flying monkeys start hanging around this, this crook, this dishonest person, and they see him getting away with it, so they become dishonest people. They become just like the narcissist. But once a person who is truly honest and has character understands that they're 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 gone they're out of there another reason that uh, we can be freed from a narcissist or another way we can be freed from a narcissist is just to have this uh, determination that we are going to do what is right 
because we have this inner sense of morality and goodness. Not everyone has that. Psychopaths, uh, you'd be hard-pressed to find a psychopath who can uh, determine to do what is right except for himself. But uh, empaths, yeah, we got it by the buck bucket loads. So another reason we... Um, We'll free ourselves from a narcissist once we realize it and know the truth is because we realize this guy, this, this woman, whoever it is, has a lot of victims. And there's other victims coming down the road, and we don't want to enable this person to hurt people. We don't want anything to do with that based solely upon ethics. Now, there could also be some legal ramifications. You know, if you let the a narcissist live in your house, for example... Uh, or you're not just enabling that person, but the law may consider you a participant in their, in their illegal activities, possibly. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know. But we need to protect ourselves. We need to protect others. And the way to do that is once we realize the truth is get as far away from the narcissist as possible. Now, how do you do that? What if you have a family member or a close friend or a coworker who is a flying monkey? And any time you get around your family member, you know, like a spouse, brother, sister, whatever, and they are connected to the narcissist, then what happens is they are, they are the narcissist by proxy. So to get away from the narcissist, you have to get away from your spouse or your brother or sister or from your coworker or whoever that person is. So sometimes it's a secondary separation, but believe me, the narcissist knows what they're doing. And they will get to you because, well, that gives them spy. That's a way that they inflate their ego by knowing that they are getting to you by going through someone who is close to you. Two rectangles on the screen. Let's keep talking if you want. Just click on one of those two rectangles and our conversation will go on. But if not, well, thanks for stopping by and see you all next time.